Hi guys, welcome to Debbie's Rusty Brush. Today's painting is a cute little hummingbird. Now I'm uh, a member of a the Turquoise Iris Creative Connection Group and we do challenges every month. This month the challenge is to add splatter to a project. Now I did add splatter to this painting. I probably will also add splatter to a bookcase I'm working on um, just because I'm comfortable adding splatter to a painting, uncomfortable adding it to furniture, so I may go ahead and do that. So this is the painting that we are painting today. It's just a cute little hummingbird with some trumpet vines that he is sucking on there. And then I upcycled this frame to match the painting. So it is um, colored in order to match this picture. Um, that video is over on my Facebook page, um, and uh, I'm at Facebook. Um, it's Debbie's Rusty Brush, and I will drop the link down below, so if you want to run over and take a look at that. I may um, get that downloaded and edited on my computer and get that up. It just takes me longer that way, so I don't know when that will happen. So if you want to see how I frame um, these pictures, these paintings with thrifted frames, um, then head on over to Debbie's Rusty Brush on Facebook and watch that video. It's about 45 minutes long and I take you through um, what I paid for the frame, um, cleaning the frame, painting the frame, um, the what I use to actually put the frame, the, the uh, picture painting inside the frame um, and how I go about doing all of that. Also, um, if you search me out here on YouTube, I do have another video on turning a plastic, a thrifted plastic um, frame that I turn into old barn wood. So that's also yeah, somewhere here on um, YouTube. I would love to link it. I don't know how to do that guys, old old slow brain don't understand it but it is there so um, hopefully someday I'll figure that out but if you want to see how I do that search that one out um, it's turning a plastic uh, picture frame into barn wood all right so let's get going on this video um, I will speed it up I will do a voiceover so that you know what I'm doing every step of the way I am using my DIY um, clay base paint and a little bit of Dixie Belle mineral um, chalk paint for this painting. I did not use any other uh, brands in the painting or the frame. Um, other than I do use Krylon matte finish spray um, for my painting as well as for the frame. So, if you have any questions, drop them in the description, or the description, drop them in the comments below. Um, if you have anything that you'd like to see me try to paint, I would be glad to do that. Put those suggestions down there as well. Um, I promise, whether it turns out good or it's a fail, um, I will do a video and show you what we come up with. All right, if you like my videos, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, share with your friends because I'm trying to get my channel to grow and that helps a whole lot. Um, if you uh, want to be notified, hit that little bell thingy and it will notify you anytime I upload a video. That is typically on Thursdays. Sometimes I get busy, it might be Friday. Sometimes I get ambitious and I'll do two or three a week. So. Um, but for the most part, definitely Thursdays is when I get videos uploaded. All right, let's get going. Okay, guys, so what I'm doing is I am just really, really watering down some DIY Old 57 and splattering it onto a blank canvas. Um, and I also watered down some Bunker Hill Blue from Dixie Belle. And I... Um, splattered that then we dried it now I've got some um, petal pusher by DIY and I've got it really watered down and I'm just staining the canvas 
so that it has a blue look but kind of more of a watercolor look to it. Um, so I've, I've got it just really watered down and we're just doing a glaze over the canvas itself. Other than where we're going to put the bird because it didn't need a glaze. Then I decided that I needed some more Old 57 on there. It got a little dulled with putting the glaze over so I went ahead and watered down some more and splattered that. Now I'm taking some Queen Bee with a putty knife and just making a the hummingbird beak. And now I've got, um, what is it? Water lily. And I'm outlining the bird and getting um, some proportions in there, an idea of where I want the bird, how his tail is going to be. Um, I'm taking in with some Bunker Hero Blue and getting some of that in there to darken up that tail. And I'm mixing in some um, Monet's Garden. And then I'm going in with some Queen Bee now, just in the belly area. Um, you'll see me blend with my finger and with a paper towel. Right now I've got Lucky Lavender. That is a Dixie Belle color. And I'm just making the wing. And because they flutter real fast in flight, they're almost see-through. Um, so um, I've got the Lucky Lavender. I'm mixing in just a tiny bit of that green in there in areas which is giving me a very, very light gray. So it almost looks like movement. And then I'm going to put some of that Lucky Lavender in through the body and get that blended in there with the green and the yellow and the blue and just play and blend on the canvas until I have a nice look. Um, and because I am dipping my brush in water um, and spritzing my canvas every once in a while, um, I've got really kind of a, a very watercolor um, kind of feel to it. Um, I am building up layers, so the end result will not have necessarily a watercolor look, um, but it's similar. So it's not like a full coverage um, acrylic. I did do the splatter first, and if you look really closely at the end product, you will see the splatter through the bird underneath all the layers. So this is not real thick paint that is going on there. I'm using just a little bit of each color and blending them together, rubbing some of it back with the paper towel, and just trying to get a good cohesive blend going. Um, I do kind of want that watercolor feel to it um, through the bird and through the background. So um, right now I'm going in with more blue and some green, uh, a little bit of cowgirl coral because he just was missing a little something something. And so I wanted to add some cowgirl coral up through his head and then a little bit down in his belly as well. Um, just to give a little bit more contrast and a little bit more um, color variation in him. And then I just decided that I wanted to uh, brighten up a little bit, a few of those feathers through his wing. So I added a bit more of the Lucky Lavender. And then going in with just a touch of my little black dress to put an eye in there and just a couple little twinkle dots of white um, just because I like those. Okay, and so now I'm just going up here in the corner and I've got some Monet's Garden and I'm just putting in an area that um, will be like background leaves. Um, and so then I've got some oranges and yellows and I'm going to do uh, a trumpet vine coming down um, where the little hummingbird is kind of suckling on the nectar. And as you can tell, my cat Ziva is wanting to help with this painting process. She likes to make an appearance every once in a while. Now in this trumpet vine, I am using um, fire starter and Summer Crush. They're both oranges. One is brighter than the other one. I've got um, layered chocolate going in the center there, and then some um, Queen Bee and blending in there to add some yellow. And then I'm going to go in with um, Liquid Sunshine because I wanted more yellow in there um, than the Queen Bee was giving me. And 
after I do this next little bud coming down, um, I do decide to go through and mix in just a little bit of white with the um, liquid sunshine to brighten up just a few areas in through those petals. I don't want to overdo these flowers. I didn't want to put in the entire vine. I just want the vine peeking out of the corner there where the hummingbird is right on the edge of the bush and is uh, doing its little job. And then as we get the blending done inside those trumpet vines, I'm going to go in here with a little bit more <clears throat> Monet's Garden because I want it a little darker. And then I'm taking a little bit of aviary just to add in um, a little bit of a color difference. Um, this really, really is at the background. So then we sign it. We dry it. This is a heat gun, by the way. Um, and... I decided that I had a spot that I missed with the blue um, and I wanted to get that a little bit covered with some of that um, wash. And so now I'm going in with my clear coat. Typically I would not dry that with the heat gun, but I wanted to be able to let you guys see the full process. Okay guys, so that is how we painted this um, hummingbird painting. Um, it does have a bit of a watercolor look through the background. Um, and we did all of the blending here on the canvas itself. Um, the sky has that splatter that I talked about in the beginning that we had to do as part of our challenge. And so the sky is basically just splattered with blue and I have a wash of a lighter blue over the top of that. So the great thing about these uh, mineral and clay based paints is that you can um, just use water to water them down and use them as a glaze or a stain or whatever you want to do where with acrylic you really should use a medium to do that. Um, but with the clay base paint, it's not a problem. Highly pigmented, works out great. Don't need a lot of paint, a little bit of water, we're good to go. All right, again, if you like my videos, thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, hit the little bell notification, and share with your friends. I'd appreciate it. Thank you, and you guys have a wonderful week, and thanks for hanging out with me. Bye-bye.